If the owner of this club knew that 300 people are coming or 400 people, they should have the best security. He claims the nightclub is partially to blame for lack of security. The father of Orlando's mass killer speaks publicly tonight, and his comments are fueling an explosion of controversy. And this just in, we have learned investigators have confiscated two phones that belong to the Orlando nightclub gunman, Omar Mateen. And right now, we're told they're trying to decide whether to file charges against his wife for failing to alert law enforcement about what she knew. Now, here's the latest tonight. Police say 30-year-old Noor Salman drove her husband to Pulse in order to scout out the gay nightclub. She was also with him when he bought ammunition. FBI agents are now trying to determine the depth of her involvement, with the feds reportedly set to convene a grand jury. Uh, she could be charged as an accessory to 49 counts of murder and 53 counts of attempted murder. As the FBI continues to investigate, we're hearing from survivors of Sunday morning's bloodshed. Victims described the horror of the massacre during a hospital news conference. In the bottom of the toilet was just covered with handprints and blood and so when I looked back the other way, I could just see other people like piled behind me, just blood. Some were dead and some were just m moaning in, in like pain. And well, tonight, more than 40 people are still in the hospital after Sunday's attack, six of them in critical condition. And happening right now in Orlando, hundreds have gathered to remember the 49 innocent lives lost. Now, Fox 5's Nathalie Pozo is live in Orlando. And Nathalie, the community is letting this tragedy, not letting it define them. Sine Russ, the community says they will be defined by love and compassion, not hate. Several prayer services were held throughout the city today. Officials attending some of those services, the mayor of Orlando offering his condolences to the families who lost loved ones, reassuring them that their city is behind them during this unbearable process. Candlelight vigil at the University of Central Florida to remember the 49 lives lost. Us as knights to unite, us as humans to unite and just spread love because that's what this community is about. That's what us as knights are about. That's this student directly impacted by the horror that took place at the nightclub that for some represented acceptance and a place to bond. Uh, I was a very consistent patron of Pulse nightclub. Um, it was the first club I ever went to um, once I, I was 18. So it's it's been a process. An uplifting message for a city struck with evil, love, not hate. It was very strong and it was a really good reminder right now. I mean, there's so much anger in the world and it's such a great thing to hear. It's great to come together as a community. And hundreds gathered at First Baptist Church in Orlando to honor and remember those killed. The names of all 49 victims read. A standing ovation for this man who was inside the nightclub when the gunman opened fire. But I do know one thing. We will get through this and be stronger. And the mayor of Orlando announcing a plan for the families who lost loved ones. We'll have more on that and what you can do starting tomorrow coming up on Fox 5 News Edge at 11. Reporting live in Orlando, Nathalie Pozo, Fox 5 News. Right, Nathalie, thanks. A moving moment caught on camera this afternoon at the hospital in Orlando. A little girl in a wheelchair paid tribute to victims. Now, Destiny just had these little teddy bears to give. The 10-year-old is a patient at Orlando Health, and that's where many of the victims were rushed after the deadly attack. She says when she learned of the shooting, she was very sad, and that's when she decided to leave a piece of herself with those no longer with us. Hi there, can you tell me what you came to drop off here today? Um, I'm here to drop off teddy bears. Teddy bears? And why did you want to come out here today? Why was it important? Um, because I just felt bad and I feel sad about it. Well, for the past few days, many have come to this same memorial outside the hospital to say their final goodbyes. 
Well, thousands gathered tonight in Atlanta to remember the victims of the shooting. Well, Fox News Denise Dillon is live at the Center for Civil and Human Rights. And Denise, there was a huge turnout there tonight. Yeah, there really was. Organizers expected a big crowd, but thought the rain we had earlier this evening would keep a lot of folks away. Well, that certainly wasn't the case. There were more than 2,500 people here standing shoulder to shoulder. They say they came here to grieve and to remember. We are Atlanta. Nosotros somos Atlanta. And we are Orlando. The crowd was big, passionate, and strong and they were diverse. Most who came to the vigil for Orlando, hosted by the LGBT Institute, say they came to unite and to mourn. I grew up in Orlando and it hit home. And there's friends and family down there that could have been there. It's hard. We've been crying since it happened. River and Nakota Reynosa say they spent hours worrying about loved ones in Florida. They finally learned their friends were safe, but they say the pain for those they didn't know personally is still heart-wrenching. Both of my communities have been hit, the, the Hispanic community and the gays. Luis Daniel Wilson Leon, 37 years old. For the 49 killed and the many others injured in Orlando, the determination to stand together is stronger than ever. Whether we're black, white, the Indians, Latino, it doesn't matter. We're all family. We need to come together and act like a family and learn to love each other. At times tonight, there were somber moments. There were also times of cheering. As people were leaving, they said they felt a little better, knowing they're not grieving alone. Reporting live in Atlanta, Denise Dillon, Fox 5 News. Well, there is new concern tonight about security at Atlanta's local gay establishments. But they say it appears the shooter, Omar Mateen, cased the Orlando nightclub before he opened fire, killing 49 people at Pulse. Well, coming up all new and next on News Edge at 11, what's being done at local bars and nightclubs to keep patrons safe in the wake of this horrific attack? That's all coming up ahead in the next hour.